Hello, BookTube. I'm uh, going to make a, a quick video today. We're going to do uh, a mail haul. I've got a, a small pile of books here. We'll see if we can dodge our way past any more infractions of rule number one. <laughs> For those of you who may be finding me through the algorithm and not knowing what I'm talking about, I mean, don't send me a book. I know I have lots and lots of books, including some that are getting blasted by the sun. Uh, so it might seem like a natural gift, but I have... Uh, I'm pretty picky when it comes to the books that I want to own or keep, and uh, so I've been telling people for 175 years, don't send me a book. Don't give me a book as a gift. If you want me to have a, a gift, as a, a book as a gift, then give me book credit. Used to be at my favorite bookstores. Now you can also do that online, at, at Amazon or whatnot, or something like that, rather than sending me a specific book that I almost certainly will either already have or not want. And we've had a rash of, uh, of violations of rule number one, and most of them have been very nice, very welcome on my part, uh, which kind of weakens the strength of my prohibition. But we're going to give it a try. We'll, we'll go through. We've got four packages here, including a box. Now, the box says that it's from Amazon, so we may have trouble right there. Uh, but let's, let's see what this first one is. We'll see how many of these are from publishers. Okay, this first one is from a publisher. Great. Uh, it's an advanced copy of something that doesn't come out until early April. This is called Paradise Nevada, a novel by Dario Diafebi, uh, which is his debut. Fantastic. How wonderful. An exhilarating new literary voice. Well, they're all called that. They can't all be that, but he might be. You never know. Uh, the author is a former high-stakes poker player turned MFA grad. And in this book, he tells the story of four transplants braving political and social tensions behind the deceptive, spectacular, and endlessly self-reinventing city of Las Vegas. At its core, the novel is about the conflict between self-driven ambition and community values in contemporary America. Okay. Rather it be about people, <laughs> but that's okay. Uh, the novel begins in 2015. On a Friday in May, a bomb detonates in the infamous... Positano Luxury Resort and Casino, a mammoth hotel on the Las Vegas Strip. Six months prior, a crop of strivers converges on the city, on the desert city, attempting to take a home amidst the, da the dizzying lights. Ray, a mathematically minded, high stakes professional poker player, uh, Mary Ann, a clinically depressed cocktail waitress, Tom, a tourist from the working class suburbs of Rome, Italy, and Lindsay, a Mormon journalist from the Las Vegas Sun who dreams of a literary career. The author braids these individual stories into a sweeping climax. By chance and by design, the characters find themselves caught up in a backroom scheme for personal and political power and are thrown into the deep end of an even bigger fight for the soul of the paradoxical town. Okay, uh... All right, well, this is the author's debut novel. That's that's great. That's fine by me. Uh, so I will give it a try. Uh, this doesn't come out until early April, so I won't give it a try anytime soon. But uh, but I, you all know I'm a big fan of debut novels. I love them. I love the clean slate feeling that you get. None of the none of the 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 little semi-defeated sigh that comes when you're reading a later novel by an author and you're realizing, uh Okay, it's the same stuff. It's this, it's the same thing. You are not, you are not straying from from what got you here, and which is, I guess, understandable. But when you're a reviewer, it can be pretty tiring. Uh, so what what is this next one here? Oh my, oh my. Okay, oh, we go to nonfiction. This is Peter Vronsky. This is American serial killers. The Epidemic Years, <laughs> 1950 to 2000. Well, I guess there was an uptick. <laughs> Let's see. So this comes out in uh, in early February. Uh, not this coming Tuesday, but the Tuesday after that. Uh, while true crime podcasts, documentaries, and TV series abound today, from the 1960s through the 1990s, serial killers became household names. Eyes were glued to the stories of their horrors, and it became, in a way, cult celebrities. In fact, some of the most famous, Gacy, Bundy, Manson, Ramirez, were featured in trading cards, calendars, lunchboxes, and even action figures. 
only by demented individuals, uh, but nevertheless true. Uh, even with our current strong fascination with them, there aren't the breaking news stories of serial killers or celebrity serial killers in the way there once was in our recent past. As the author points out in this book, uh, it's, uh, quote, in its own time, however, when it was happening, this surge of serial murders in the United States was referred to as a serial killer epidemic. This book is the first definitive history of what's been called the golden age of serial murder. These narrative accounts uh, will take readers through the most unusual and prominent serial killings from the 1950s to the early 21st century. In accessible yet gripping writing, it is filled with both perennial favorites like the Son of Sam or the Zodiac Killer to lesser known narratives like Kendall Francois, Robin Gecht, that readers of true crime thirst for. The author is one of the widely accepted voices in this area of history and is continuously researching cases. Okay, so <laughs> some of you out there find serial killers, serial killers even more fascinating than I do. Uh, and this comes out in early February, so I have every, I have every reason to jump right in and start reading. I, just, I will do that. Uh, and we have one of these big uh, white envelopes. Uh, let's see. Let's see what we have here. Even those of you who are uh, who are wincing at the bright sun hitting those those shelves, uh, uh, if you live in the American Northeast you might want to drink up that site anyway because we're it looks like we're going to get a fairly ugly messy snowstorm sleet storm uh starting on monday so this weekend looks to be sunny and bright but cold and then the temperatures go up and we get weather <laughs> we get ugly wet snowy weather uh anyway let's oh okay great this next one's from tor it's science fiction fantasy they're a great publisher of science fiction fantasy and i uh, don't get as much as I like. I don't get as much as I read. I read a huge amount of science fiction fantasy and I don't, I don't, uh, okay, this is late getting to me. This came out a week ago, or two weeks ago, uh, and this is Venge War, uh, by Kevin Anderson. This is book two of Wake the Dragon. So the first one was Spine of the Dragon, which I think we saw on this channel. I think I read it and fairly liked it, but this is the second book in that series. I'll have to see if Venge, if Spine of the Dragon is available. Uh, two continents at war. Three kingdoms and Ishara have been in conflict for a thousand years. But when an outside threat arises, the reawakening of a powerful ancient race that wants to remake the world, the two warring nations must somehow set aside generations of hatred to form an alliance against a far more deadly enemy. The three kingdoms are shattering under pressure from an inexperienced new king who is being led by an ambitious regent to ignore the threat of the Wreths, W-R-E-T-H-E, Wreth, -E, so wrath only with an E, in favor of a venge war with Ashara. Okay, so uh, this this is already out in your bookstores, and uh, so I'm going to be a little late to the game if I review it. But uh, the idea here is is a familiar one. It's a familiar idea to, uh, to epic fantasy stories, which is, you know, can inveterate enemies put aside their their enemy their hatred in order to save themselves from a larger threat uh that goes all the way back to the dna of the lord of the rings <laughs> uh, and then we have the box the amazon box and that could be one of you misbehaving it could easily be it's fairly heavy uh, let's see what this is and then i'm going to wrap things up uh, for today. <laughs> okay i uh i I think I know who this is from, but maybe not. I made a very heavy-handed call for this book, so I don't I don't actually have a stern warning to issue, because I, I very heavy-handedly called for uh, the hardcover with a dust jacket of Kenneth Clark's Civilization, and one of you duly noted sent it to me. Now, I could have sworn that one guilty party actually announced to me that they were sending this to me, and so that wouldn't come in an Amazon box, I don't think. Uh, I don't think it will. This looks like like somebody just ordered it off Amazon for me, like one of you did. And one of you, one of you did that. I am tremendously grateful. This is exactly the Charlemagne gold statue that I wanted. I got a trade paperback of this. It's a wonderful, sturdy book, uh, research-wise, writing-wise. It's just a wonderful, wonderful overview of American, of Western art and history. Uh, 
that I loved. I've had 80 million copies of this book, but I, uh, Mark Richardson, I think it was, or maybe Jason Harrigan, held up a hardcover with a dust jacket the other day that they found. I think it was Mark, because I think you remember, I think I remember whoever found it, found it for like 10 cents. Uh, and that made me realize I didn't have a copy, and then right after that I found a trade paperback at the Brattle Bookshop here in Boston, but it was a later imprint that didn't have this iconic cover. So I made a heavy-handed comment in that haul video that what I really wanted was the hardcover with a dust jacket, and one of you, one of you sent this to me. This is, this is becoming irretrievable <laughs> situation. So, so I, I am tremendously, tremendously grateful. And, uh, I will not, I don't know that, that uh, the sender needs any assurances, but I will not be sending this away <laughs> to anybody. This is what this is. I've been, I've been deciding recently in the last couple of years that really uh, a lot of the books that I have in my collection ought to be books that I have there because I know I love them. And so they should be there, period. And, they, and if, if somebody wants a copy, I should find them an extra copy rather than send my own. There should be, in other words, a protected class of standard books in my collection that don't go anywhere, uh, and or in my ebook collection. And this this is definitely one of them. So thank you very much. I hope I don't have a whole slew of these things coming to me, but one way or another, that is our mail for today. We have Civilization by Kenneth Clark in exactly the edition that I wanted. Then we have Venge War by Kevin Anderson. I'd love to hear from any of you. Uh, who read Spine of the Dragon. Did any of, you, did any of you out there read Spine of the Dragon? And if so, what did you think of it? And then Peter Vronsky writing a history of C American serial killers of the last half century. Uh, and finally, a debut novel. What a haul. What a great haul. Uh, Paradise, Nevada. Uh, what a group of people con converging on a gambling den and maybe changing it or themselves. So there you go. That is our, our mail haul for today. A little bit old and a little bit new. <laughs> uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to wrap this up for now, uh, but I'll be back. Thank you, BookTube.